Hello out there in Nala land. We are continuing honorable mention, uh, different applications of being a kind person, and now we're going to get to another Torah obligation, which is the mitzvah of lending money. Let's establish right away that this class, as always, is Le'ele Nishmas Rochalea, Basu Chaim Tzia, Le'a Shalom, Shana Lichtige Gan Eden. Our source book for today is the very interesting and well done book by Rabbi Avram Ehrman, translated in English as Journey to Virtue. So let's look at some of the obligations regarding lending money. Interesting here, the Torah says, in case of Talmud, if you will lend money, and Rashi points out, it's not, it should not be translated as if. When a three-plate Torah says if, it means you must. You must. If the person is an individual who you have no reason to suspect will not, if you have, the person is a, a person who you have every reason to believe will pay you back, you are obliged. We're breaking all kinds of uh, images we have. First, we thought that kindness was something which is commendable. Of course it's commendable. It's also obligatory. Lending money is something which you must do. And we're going to give some examples how you must lend money to others. A person, let's give names, Mr. Worker, who is a salaried employee, asks Mr. Rich, who is a very wealthy businessman, if he can give him a loan of $8,000 for four months. Because the person is a salaried individual, a reason that you have every reason to suspect he'll have the wherewithal to repay, Mr. Rich is obliged. He can't say, no, I don't feel like it. No, you are obliged to make this loan. That's part of the obligation from the Torah. And the mitzvah of lending a loan is greater than the mitzvah of charity because when you give a loan, the person who receives it will not necessarily feel embarrassed. And someone who gives stock or gives charity and someone who invests so that the person who receives the money will be able to start their own business is even greater also, greater than, than the one who loans because it's, he's put a person on their feet. Like the well-known expression, which I could never get right, to give a person a fish they've eaten for a day, teach a man to fish, and he'll eat for the rest of his life. I know that's not how it goes, but I hope you got the gist, you know, without my corruption. So, lending is better than charity, and investing in... Likewise, there's a mitzvah to give, to lend to someone, who, even one who's wealthy. Sometimes, a person, even though they may be of affluent means, they just can't get to their money. It's frozen, it's uh, not liquid, so there's a mitzvah to lend to someone who's wealthy, just like there's a mitzvah to lend to someone who is poor. Needless to say, someone who's poor will have precedence over someone who's wealthy, but the mitzvah of lending will apply to everyone. And not only that, yeah, 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 yeah. even one who is poor, who has money on hand, must lend to others. Let's give an example. Someone who lives in Israel is marrying off their daughter and doesn't have the means for the wedding. He travels overseas to raise money. He's successful on his trip. He comes back four weeks before the wedding. He has all the money he needs to pay for the wedding ceremony. And then... Someone tells him that, could you lend me money for three weeks? If the person is a trustworthy person, he's obliged to lend the money to this person because he only needs it in four weeks and the person will only need the money to loan for three weeks. The obligation is applicable to everybody. Okay, now this mitzvah, Pasuk and Vayikra, V'chai Chicha Imach, your brother must live with you, obliges us to give someone sustenance. Therefore, if someone asks you for a loan that they can build a business from which they can sustain themselves, then the obligation to lend them is all that much greater, that a person will be able to live. Therefore, if someone wants the money for sustenance, that will be the most important and it will trump any other obligation to lend. Likewise, if you see that someone is Khalila on the verge of financial collapse, you're obliged to rescue them through loans, outright gifts, or any other means to make sure that they have sustenance to keep them afloat and keep them financially vibrant. Now, doing kindness, and lend, is we learn in the Mishnah and Peah, we say it every morning, is one of those mitzvahs which has no upper limit. Ain't lem shir, there's no limit to it. There's no end. Okay, now the mitzvah of lending money, which we've established, the Torah says, is an obligation. Likewise, the same thing will apply to objects. And it comes to the world to come, and they'll ask you, why didn't you loan? It's a mitzvah in the Torah. You'll say, I didn't have any money. That will not absolve you from lending objects. A screwdriver, a chair, a pencil, a pen, a cup, whatever you have. It's all the same mitzvah of loaning to others. All kinds of favors, acts of kindness you can do for others, 
lending your tools, your utensils, your car, anything that you can lend, it's all part of the mitzvah. If you don't lend to someone else because of laziness, you have violated the mitzvah of kindness. If you don't lend an object because you dislike the person, then you violate the prohibition against hatred, hatred in your heart. If you don't lend someone a possession because that person once didn't lend to you, then you violate the prohibition against revenge. As we've once quali- clarified, you can possibly, in one fell swoop, you can do both revenge and bearing a grudge. Lo tikom lo titor. Rashi's example in Chumash is that if Joe asks for a hoe from Mo, and Mo says, no ho Joe, that certainly wasn't kind. Now, Mo wants a hoe from Joe, and Joe were to say, I'm not like you, Mo. 